So I'm here to talk about a language proposal Barry and I worked on this week, and by this week I meant last night. <laughs> so let's say we want to concatenate, concatenate multiple ranges, do that lazily, and do something on each element. So we've got our three ranges here, we want to turn them into one and then iterate over them. And we could do that manually, but that's kind of bad, like just write the three for loops, but now we hard to do something. So a better way would be to use views concat. That's hopefully coming in C++ 26. Um, like for simplicity, I'm just using three here, but the reality is very addict. So we just create a concat view, and then we can iterate over it and do something on each element, and we've nicely separated the concatenation from each element. The implementation of views concat is a bit convoluted. Um, essentially, we need to store a variant of each potential iterator type, and then operator star needs to dereference the current one, and operator plus plus advances it or switches to the next one. I mean, that's a bit tricky. There's a reason this is not in the standard library yet. Luckily, since 23, there's an easier way to do that. Uh, we can just write a coroutine. So we just use the generator, and then we can just write the three for loops and yield each individual element. And we still get like the same interface, but the implementation actually fits on the slide. Well, except the one for generator, but um, you can never have everything. So here, the compiler actually uh, is nice and generates a state machine for us. Um, when we call core yield, this stores the current element somewhere and suspends. And then the generator provides iterators. Operator star simply returns the stored element. And operator plus plus resumes the coroutine so it can compute the next one. So let's benchmark it. Oh, right. Uh, so the idea is essentially we get the compiler to write this third variant for us, which is uh, very nice. So let's benchmark it. Um, I've got a very tiny test. I just want to concatenate three vector ins. There are 30 elements each and want to sum them all. Uh, concat and do something that takes 11 nanoseconds because we're just adding 90 integers, basically. If we do views concat, that is about two times slower, which makes sense. We've got the variant that introduces additional await. The compiler can't really see through that. But with coroutines, the compiler has generated all the code, so the compiler is able to do just see what's going on. So we probably get like a performance similar to the manual one, right? Who thinks that? OK, you've seen the title of the talk. But we've seen like the, but we're doing the same thing as with the iterator, so it should be two times slower, just like the iterator. Who thinks that? OK. OK, um, so maybe it's slower. Maybe it's at least three times slower. Who thinks it's at least three times slower? OK, four times. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a lightning talk, so we'll just, um, it's 20 times slower. <laughs> Which is pretty bad. Um, it's caused by heap allocation to store the coroutine state, and the state machine is still pretty opaque to the optimizer. This overhead, like, absolutely, relatively becomes smaller when we're doing more work than just adding 90 integers, but it's still pretty bad. So um, if we just go back to the manual implementation, instead of do something, let's just pass in a sync, and then we invoke the sync for each element, and now we can nicely separate it gets a bit more convoluted when we want to support break. So we had, let's say return false means break. And then we just need to catch that and handle that break appropriately. And this is nice. We use that at Thingsel a lot. However, it's not like not as nice to use uh, on the user interface. So the idea is um, let's g give uh, that pattern language support. So you can write an operator for in the proposal, which is a function that takes a yield handle. And then we can yield into that sync, which essentially just invokes the sync, checks if it's done. And then, uh, so this looks just like the coding code, but it's not actually a coding. It's just the same code as shown before. Um, and then the magic happens with the for loop. So this will invoke the operator for with a lambda that the compiler has generated from the body. And it will translate a break to return false. It will translate a return to a, like store the thing somewhere and return false and so on. So the compiler will just do the transformation for us and invoke the thing. And that way we've got all the advantages of coroutines without any of the disadvantages. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the proposal at that URL. If you're watching this live, you can find the proposal on my laptop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>